22 years ago, we were beginning to emerge as a very strong community. Gresham and Portland were starting to notice that more Latinos were living in the area and not leaving. They weren't migrating through, they were staying. And so there was a need for an entity that could speak to that experience and advocate for a broader investment from the various cities than what was currently happening. I called a few people uh, and uh, we started having coffee in the morning to just start the conversation, start uh, trying to figure out what we were going to do. I thought there's a need for us to develop some, some uh, organization to where we can talk to each other. A strong, independent voice on, on what would be uh, the best interests of Latino or Hispanic families, uh, children in specific. And we had a lot of issues, um, both in terms of high dropout rates, um, uh, gang activity, um, a lot of different kinds of health issues, and uh, not enough services. But for me, it's, it's, it's not shipping our problem somewhere else. There were Latinos that were hanging around basically downtown. And the business people basically wanted to displace those Latinos out of the downtown area and, and say, oh, we're going to establish a community center outside of that area. And, you know, they were ready to cut a check from the city to do that. Some of us opposed that. What they wanted to deal with was a single male population from the Latino community. And for us, the greatest need was with families and children. And so I got involved at that point in time because of that. We identified as trying to give voice to the voiceless. Um, they were um, a silent community, one that was not understood, uh, not politically active, uh, but beginning to show up. You know, I think in coming to do this video, there's a, a tremendous nostalgia. Um, for what has been. The nonprofit started in my basement, literally. There we were, um, sort of, you know, struggling for a voice, for a presence. We started out with, what, four people and then grew to 22. Look at this now. It's like you can't turn and, and not notice Latino Network. When we first started the Latino Network, we had a vision, but, you know, it's always exciting when you start something and then it continues to grow. As the community continues to grow, it's very important that education has to be continue to be a priority because they're our future. The mission of Latino Network today is to positively transform the lives of Latino youth, families, and communities. And we do that in lots of different ways. To demonstrate unity, political action, uh, commitment, engagement, those, those action steps or, or values are going to be critical in, in the future. Uh, the challenges are not going away. Latino Network represented that, that opportunity to come together and says, look, here's our agenda. Here's what we need. You know, nobody is going to give us anything without us advocating for it with us demanding a change. And, and so it, it, just, it just further resolves uh, us who, who saw the start of the network to uh, promote its uh, success. I do not believe that our community chooses to live on our knees, but to stand uh, together and in unity uh, for justice. And I believe that is kind of what the network means to me. And lead, lead with all your passion, but lead with humility. Lead knowing that others have uh, had those footsteps in front of you. They may not be visible to you, but they're there traced for you to 